And on the right-hand side of your picture, Ai Hanchan Guven, who won from pole position. Pole position today belongs to that man there, Lauren Heinrich in the number 92 Porsche. And Larry Tenforda is all the way down in fifth place on the grid. And I can't actually remember the last time he started that far down on the grid, Dave. No, uh, it really surprised us. Ian Chan Guven then, uh, he took the win yesterday. And he, of course, is on the inside of the track, but it's a staggered, it's a staggered grid. Mm. Uh, so uh, Lauren Heinrich is advantaged by uh, some metres. But Ian Chan Guven, if he gets a very, very good start, uh, could could uh, potentially convert P2 into P1. But, of course, there are all sorts of connotations that we could talk about about what could happen. We're not going to know until the uh, lights go from red to green as to what is going to happen. Larry Tenvorda, then, as you quite rightly said, out of position, I think it's fair to say, going from uh, P5 on the grid for the uh, Dutch driver, who, of course, has been so dominant in uh, Porsche Carrera Cup. But talking of dominance in Carrera Cup, there's a lot of big names in the grid, on the grid. And Lauren Heinrich, uh, who starts on pole position, he has been fed up with staring at the back of Larry Tenforda's car for the entire season. The only way he could guarantee that not happening in this race to start with was to put it on pole position, which is exactly what he's done, his first pole position. And is he going to do enough to pick up his first race win of the year? Ihan Guven, who starts second, the first ever Turkish winner in Porsche Carrera Cup Germany, ahead of Max van Splunteren, who starts third on the grid. And uh, Luke Hartel, our leading junior driver who starts fourth on the grid was doing so well yesterday and then an error uh, saw him relegated uh, down to the back of the pack and ultimately finishing in 18th position we're on the formation lap uh, the cars are using this time to get the heat into the tires and into the brakes Lauren Heinrich on pole position alongside on Aung Chan Guba and then Max Van Splinteren and Luke Hartog an uncharacteristic low fifth place for Larry Tenporda. And a very impressive returning Christopher Zirkling alongside in six. Morris Schuring, uh, who's impressed very much alongside Leon Kurler on row four with Julian Hansis and Rudy Van Buren on row five. Row six, Jesse Van Kijk and Lucas Groeneveld with uh, Dan Van Kijk and Yuka Honkavori on row seven. Row eight, Sandra Kaibach and our leading pro-am driver, Carlos Rivas, alongside Jan-Erik Sluten, uh, alongside, uh, behind him, and you can see the rest of the uh, grid uh, <laughs> coming through in the graphics. The problem is that the lap is so short here at Osterslebe and there's not enough time to uh, read the grid out. It is just a 3.6 kilometre track, <laughs> and so they have to ruffle the graphics through very quickly. It's only like 2.27 miles, you know. Henrik, who's in charge of the graphics here, you can see him press the throttle pedal, can you? Yeah, he's, he's just getting faster and faster. <laughs> it is, as I said, 3.667 kilometres around. It's one of the shorter tracks on the uh, uh, Porsche Carrera Cup Germany calendar. 14 turns, 7 to the left and 7 to the right. Very little in the way of gradient change, but one of the few tracks that doesn't have much gradient change, just 23 metres. Quite difficult to overtake because it's just 11 to 13 metres wide. Uh, the fastest section is at the end of the 700 metre pit straight and that presents the best overtaking opportunities. Talking of overtaking opportunities, I can see the number 99 car starting right at the back of the pack of Bastien Buse uh, making some progress during the course of the race. I'll just, I'll just bet a euro with you now that he doesn't finish P last. Oh, absolutely. His, uh, his uh, lowest finish so far has been a P9. He got a DQ in his first race for a technical issue. That was at Spa. Uh, but he is one of the real charges, the new up-and-coming stars in Porsche Carrera Cup Germany. And uh, he had a rubbish qualifying session, uh, but he will be coming through the grid. We have no doubt about that. Uh, you can see the rest of the cars just forming up on the grid. And very shortly, the man with the yellow flag will swap it for a green one. My eyes are looking up at the sky at the moment because look how dark those clouds look and uh, rain is in the forecast thunderstorms possible this afternoon that would really light things up wouldn't it that would be uh, yes it would throw a curveball into it here comes the start Five red lights are on. We're waiting for those red lights to go off. And ahead of us, it is 30 minutes of racing for Porsche Carrera Cup Germany. It's Lauren Heinrich who jumps off pole position. And there is some debris flying up. Somebody has lost a tyre at the back. We can see the rubber flying up in the air. Not entirely sure what's happened. But Lauren Heinrich leading the way. Ihan Chan Guven, but it's all hell breaking loose behind as the rest of the cars come streaming through the hotel turn. 
Absolutely, we can see a wheel become detached, and um, it is uh, Lauren Heinrich and it's Yogi Donchev. Uh, and safety car is out. That's significant damage to the Yogi Donchev car, which has caused the wheel to become detached. Doubtless we'll get a replay of it. There is stricken wheel, so it's Yogi Donchev. Uh, the uh, the uh, stricken car, safety car has been called for, so Lauren Heinrich and Ian Chan Guven and Max van Splunteren and Lo Kartog and Larry Ten, all of them, uh, will uh, slow accordingly. And Dan oh. Van Koik, look at this. Yeah. Damage on the uh, side of the Dan Van Koik car. Well, hopefully we'll see a restart of that and we'll see what's happened to those two cars. I have no doubt they've uh, got together. Christoph Huber there looks on. Uh, shaking his head in disbelief. Uh, it's not what he wanted to see at this stage of the race. So, uh, George Donchev, who uh, is in the Pro-Am category, is not going to score any points in this race, is he? And uh, you can see uh, Christoph Huber was looking on at the remnants of uh, one of his cars, run by Nebulous Racing as well, uh, stranded on the track. Uh, that was a, quite some impact to rip the wheel off like that. And it will, and it was right at the start of the race, Brian. So, what I'm trying to say by that is that they'd not, they'd not um, uh, got up to any li anything like racing speed. So. I mean, you wonder whether a car has moved sideways into uh, so. into that, but uh, hopefully we'll see a replay of that shortly. Yeah, and this is, forgive me, interrupting you. Mm -hmm. Oh, here we go. Yes, there's the replay. And uh, oh, so, he didn't get going. Didn't get going, and collected. So uh, that was Van Splinter, and wasn't see it? See it again from this angle. Oh, he I stalled. stalled. It. Yeah. And. Oh, he yeah. just didn't. Uh, I mean, and Bastian Bus collects the wheel. Yeah, that damaged and, uh, his car. That's uh, put a big dent in the uh, bonnet of uh, that Porsche, and uh, they build him strong. I don't know whether that will have affected his performance. Almost certainly will have done. So Bastian Bus, that would have been quite scary. That thing, complete with uh, I'll see it from uh, on board suspension here. hanging on, and. That was Jan Eric Sluten's perspective. Uh, that's a scary moment when you've got a stationary car in front of you while you're accelerating, isn't it? Very good avoidance by most of the drivers, and unfortunately, unfortunately, he was just collected, wasn't he? Georgi, oh, Jorgi Donchev, just uh, not able to put quite enough steering lock on to avoid, I think. Yeah, and uh, it's Dan Van Kuyk who is the car that had stored on the grid, and uh, Georgi Donchev, who uh, may have been even, up, well, he would have been unsighted till the last minute, degree. and yes, as you, you say, right. couldn't get the uh, lock on to get past. Uh, so uh, Georgi Donchev, who uh, is in the Pro-Am category, is not going to be scoring any points in that. Uh, our leading Pro-Am driver, Carlos Rivas, uh, that's a familiar sight, Carlos Rivas, because uh, he has uh, pretty well dominated the Pro-Am category in uh, recent times. He's currently 14th on the track and leading in the category. A couple of places behind him, but second in the program category is uh, Jan Eric Sluten. Uh, Luke Hartog, who starts fifth, he got away is initially. our leading junior driver. Yes, you can see he, he got it going, and you see the car just kind of jog forwards as he stalls it, and I'd say oh, an oh, easy mistake. Absolutely right, Buren got that. And uh, it really has uh, curled the uh, bonnet up on that Porsche, hasn't it? And I should say that with all the... Uh, Various uh, bits and pieces hanging off it is a pretty the, scary bit of the suspension. Well, including the wheel tether as well. Yeah, and they're not. They uh, it takes quite a bit of impact to tear one of those wheels off. And uh, there's good look inside the new uh, Porsche 911 GT3 Cup car. It's a new car uh, for this year, and uh, it's uh, is uh, a little bit higher horsepower. Last year's was 485 horsepower. This one is 510 horsepower. Four liter, naturally aspirated water-cooled flat six boxer engine mounted in the rear uh, it's a more it's a wider car than last year's actually a more muscular aggressive design as we see the remnants being dragged off smoke pouring from the tires one of the good bits about the new porsche carrera cup cars it can run on synthetic fuels which i think is uh, a really good thing absolutely and it's an area that in terms of motorsport that we're looking at isn't it because um you know uh, as a couple of our uh, marshalling team here um when it takes two people to pick it up, you realise that that landing on the front of your car is going to make you jump a little, and into the pit lane they come. Yeah, the car's being taken through the pit lane to allow the marshals to work on the start-finish straight in uh, recovering the debris. So uh, this is normal practice whenever on the uh, start-finish straight um, debris has got to be rem removed. The cars will be taken through the pit lane at a safe speed, um, of course, behind the safety car. Unbelievably, uh, Bastian Bus made it up to 22nd place despite that uh, impact from the wheel and there you can see him just going through there so uh, uh, 
We said he wouldn't uh, he wouldn't uh, hang about, and uh, despite that damage, it doesn't seem to have slowed him down too much, does it? Also, in the opening few yards, which is all we had, Lokartog had made it up to P4, which meant Zogling and Tempora had dropped a place. Yes, so yeah, Tempora down to P6. I cannot remember the last time he ran that far down. Uh, he didn't finish off the podium in any single race last year in the Porsche Carrera Cup Germany. Uh, so he has got a lot of work to do, and uh, that's exactly what Lauren Heinrich needs because. Uh, he's been staring at the back of that Larry 10 Ford car for the entire season. Finally, he's in front. Where the cars are now, there is time to get the safety car in at the end of this lap, in my opinion, because I think the debris has been cleared. Let's see. Uh, we will need to see the sign which says the pit entry is... Uh, uh, the pit exit rather is uh, closed. Safety the car safety in this lap. Oh, that's a very good prediction. You see, uh, you know your stuff, don't you? So no, we are getting really ready. A little under 24 minutes of this race remaining, and uh, it's going to be very, very tight. These cars all identical, overtaking not just the work of a moment, and uh, the drivers will be looking to take advantage of that opening lap when they're all packed close together. Lauren Heinrich has been working hard whilst we've been looking at the recovery position, and we see his mirror just hanging off very slightly uh, Heinrich is working hard to keep the heat in the brakes in the tires because he wants to catch Ai Hanchan Guven napping and uh, he wants to open up a gap as soon as possible as uh, the soon as those green lights come on well, of course, as Ryan Chan Guven nearly runs into the back of Lauren Heinrich, it is down to Lauren Heinrich now. The safety car has peeled off. Heinrich can control the pace of this restart. And it's up to him when he gives it a footfall, which he does now. And Ryan Chan Guven, well anticipated, to be honest, he's stuck with him. Uh, they make a bit of a gap over Max Van Splinteren, who's in P3. Um, we go back to greens again and get this uh, resumption of the Porsche Carrera Cup Germany race underway. Heinrich from Guven, Splunt Van Splinteren, Hartog, Zerchling, and Ten Border into Hotel. Turn one. We just saw a Zerchling 10 forward and Schuring just ducking out of the queue slightly, but uh, Guven really did anticipate that start very well. Heinrich didn't get the kind of jump he was hoping for. Opens up a bit of a gap now, and Van Splinteren has got Luke Hartog who moves to the inside, and uh, Van Splinteren kind of left the gap, oh. and uh, Hartog loses it completely, spins the car. Is he going to be avoided by the traffic? My goodness. Across the track so far, he seems to have got away with it, and that was a Whoa. scary moment for Hartog, and that's just inexperience. Unfortunately, he had that move made, uh, then lost traction, and uh, the car spins. How on earth he avoided getting T-boned by another car is beyond me, but he's at the back of the pack now. I really thought that was going to be collected. Huge, huge credit to all the drivers for being able to avoid, because he was right pinpoint in oh. the middle of the track. That was going to hurt if, uh, if it had got collected, and uh, he made a mistake yesterday. This will be the view from uh, Jan Eric Sluten, and you can see fantastic oh. avoidance by everyone, including Jan Eric Sluten. Oh, that's such a shame. I'm looking forward to seeing what Hartog could do from there. Uh, he's uh, making his debut in the series this year. And of course, the tyres were cold, cold yeah. relative to because they hadn't even they hadn't had a full racing lap. But that's the inexperience, isn't it? A young driver, and uh, he's part of the talent pool. He will learn from that, as he did yesterday. I have no doubt, as we see what Carlos Rivas's view was like. I have no doubt at all that he will learn from that. Uh, he is going to be a championship contender of the future, but he's got some uh, hard lessons to learn along the way. Wow, amazing. Uh, and here's Larry Tenvorder, who was one of the first look. And uh, Larry having to take to the curbs and the grass to avoid. Uh, that could have been so, so different. Let's go back to the uh, live feed pictures then. As um, Lauren Heinrich continues to lead from uh, Ian Chan Guven, Max Van Splunter and Larry Ten Vorder able to get past Christopher Zochling in the Malay and he's up to P4. And here we go with uh, Larry Ten Vorder uh, moving to the inside. Larry Ten Vorder ahead of Max Van Splunter and so Ten Vorder up into third place already. He's making great progress when you consider he was sixth place just a couple of laps ago. So uh, Ten Vorder definitely on the fight back, but uh, Lauren Heinrich and I Han Chan Guven in front. They are checking out more battles further down the field. That's uh, Yuka Honkavori and uh, the 57 of Rudy Van Buren. So uh, merely 20 minutes of the race remaining following the incident earlier on. And uh, that from a great onboard shot there, uh, as uh, we could see, going through the uh, number 57 car of uh, Rudy Van Buren. Here's uh, Honka, Yuka Honkavori. 
And uh, Hungavori going to come back here, or try to, going into turn number one, the hotel turn. So under braking, this pit straight is the best overtaking opportunity. Rudy Van Buren uh, shutting the door into the corner and protecting that position. Uh, the best opportunity into the hotel turn, but that is one tricky turn to get around. And you take too much speed into it, you're going to end up uh, in the gravel trap. That's the view on board with Yuka Honkavori. That's our lead duo who have broken away slightly. Lauren Heinrich uh, showing us four tenths ahead of Ihan Chen Guven, uh, but that's a uh, gap is kind of seesawing on every lap here comes bastian bus with that uh, rearranged front end courtesy of collecting that front wheel plus suspension so as we speak at the moment ten vorder who is in p3 has got a two second margin to make up to iron chan guven uh guven and heinrich as uh, you quite rightly said have broken away a bit and there as you say the remodeled front end of that uh, porsche of allied racing's bastian bus who was on the receiving end of a gift of a wheel uh, which wasn't what he wanted right at the start of the race. It'll be very interesting to see what Larry Temporter can do in terms of reducing this gap from P3. And Bastian Boos appears to have had some kind of uh, aerodynamic, aerodynamic advantage with that dent because he's making progress up to P17 already. I need to remind you, he started stone last in this race and has made his way up to uh, P17 despite that encounter with the wheel. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on Bastian Boos. He's got Sandra Kaivak just ahead of him on the track and is going to be uh, making his move on there. You can see Lauren Heinrich, uh, purple second, purple laps on lap four and five, but Guven is coming back. And what Ted Vorder wants, of course, is for a big fight between Lauren Heinrich and Ian Chan Guven. Ian Chan Guven, he's taken a couple of tenths out of the gap between uh, P2 and P3. But the more these two fight and slow, the uh, big advantage taker is going to be Larry Ten Vorder. And Larry Ten Vorder is putting in purple sectors uh, on the timing screens and uh, is looking to close in because the lead duo had broken away. Larry Ten Vorder was fighting in the traffic to come through into that third place. Can he close that gap down? You have to preserve the car. We've still got 17 and a half minutes left. We don't want to use the tires and the brakes up too early. But because of the safety car, you've got a bit of uh, you've got a bit of tire life that you wouldn't have had because you yeah. not you don't take as much out of the rubber. Obviously, when you're running behind the safety car, so I think Tim Border has he's going to throw absolutely everything at this. Uh, but uh, Heinrich and Guven, uh, to be fair, as Heinrich said, uh, the fastest lap going through sector two, uh, they are not slow. Yes, and you wouldn't expect anything less from Larry Tenfording as we see Leon Kohler piling the pressure on uh, Christopher Zirkling out of turn 14 and almost pushing him yes. round the corner. And uh, uh, Kohler moves to the inside and it's going to be a drag race. Look at Zirkling pushing him onto the grass. Leon Kohler, no traction at all, somehow holds it together and comes back. Brilliant driving from Leon Kohler. He wasn't going to back out of that. That was for P5. Christopher, that was a bit mean, to be honest. Uh, you know, he really did squeeze him onto the grass. That was a huge, huge save from Leon, in my opinion. That could have gone so horribly wrong. It was here. And I think Christopher just felt that, you know what, this isn't fair. He uh, shoved him all the way around turn 14, didn't he? So he said, right, I'm going to squeeze you now, friend. And squeeze he did. Look, on the grass, completely awful wheels, Brian. Yeah, that was going to be his justification, because he did have a bit of a thump going into the corner. And uh, Zirkling holds on to P5. Kohler in uh, P6. Uh, Morris Schuring in the background looking to take up uh, anything that might happen. And uh, you can see again that replay. That was great driving from Leon Kohler. Uh, really impressive. Morris Schuring was not able to take advantage of that, but it was absolutely amazing. Uh, ten Vorder now, the gap is down, mm, it's 2.3, it's not, it's not decreasing greatly, Brian. So Heinrich and Guven are still able to maintain their pace, as Larry Ten Vorder, though, does set up uh, sector time quicker than anyone, so we're just keeping an eye on that at the moment, and Christopher Sochling running in that P5 position, Leon Curler P6, then it is Schuring, Hansis, Van Buren and Honkavori rounding out the top ten. And Christopher Zirkling has picked up a black and white flag for that manoeuvre with Leon Curler. It is just a warning at this point, but if he tries to do that again, the stewards are probably going to take a fairly dim view on it. Kohler's back, though. Look at him weaving behind him. I really think that was payback. And oh, here comes another little <laughs> tap. Just to oh. let you know I'm here, chap. This time, he's uh, making it stick. And I wonder if there was a bit of contact. They bounce off each other, running side by side. This is a drag race to the next corner. Zirkling has the inside line, squeezes Kohler once again. Kohler is not settling for that position, is he? So uh, in P6 at the moment, he's got his eyes on P5. Zirkling driving very defensively. 
Yes, I mean, it's a real battle between these two, isn't it? Leon Curler then and Christopher Sochley. Uh, they have uh, shared more than, uh, more than a little uh, track space between the two of them. And here we can see it in replay. And again, uh, Leon Curler is... <laughs> In my opinion, he's, he's trying to find a gap sometimes where there isn't a gap. Mm. Uh, Christopher Zochling is then trying to come back at him, and inevitably, there you can see that Zochling very nearly had to shortcut that corner. And uh, this was where the, you know, the little rub and the push came between the two of them. And, you know, you have to wring the neck out of these uh, Porsche yeah. Carrera Cup cars, and both of them are wringing the neck, not out of the cars, but out of the track and the grass and everything else as well. <laughs> This is classic Leon Kohler, though. He never says never, does he? And he's always there. And uh, Morris Schuring in the background, uh, willing these two to carry on what they're doing so that he can sneak through yes. and steal the position away from both of them. Looking at our leaders, Lauren Heinrich leading by eight tenths of a second from Ayan Chan Guven. Larry Tenth Border, 2.034 seconds behind. Come on. Oh, here we go again. This time, Leon Kohler makes it stick. And uh, that takes that position away. That was perfectly fair, wasn't it? And I he didn't that... need to uh, get the bumper in on that one, did he? I think there was a mistake there from Christopher Zochling. And now we'll see just what pace Leon Curler has got in terms of getting away from the number 27 car. So Larry Tenforda doesn't look to be making any moves on Ayacen Guven. Here's a replay. Ooh, and uh, actually, Oh, then maybe there was a little bit of contact. Uh, we'll keep an eye on the, uh, the timing screens to see whether the stewards... Uh, someone ought to tell them that the uh, stock cars are on on another weekend. It's not tonight, That's so uh, it's uh, not, not cricket, really, is it? And fair play to our TV crew for giving us the uh, pictures there to, to reinforce what we can see. And definitely that move looked altogether different from a different angle, didn't it? It really did, and uh, the stewards, I have no doubt, will be taking a look at that. Uh, it's, uh, there is an element of rubbing that is allowed, but that was uh, quite a little thump that he gave him, and uh, there was uh, uh, many thumps before that. Uh, we're looking at the leader now, uh, Lauren Heinrich looking back at Ihan Chen Guva, and that's the one and two. You can see that Heinrich is not getting away. Ten Forder is keeping them in sight. Well, to be fair, I think on the last lap, Heinrich and Guva were a bit cl quicker than Ten Forder. Let's see, the timing screen will tell us all. Ten Forder has lost three tenths of a second yeah. in that last lap, so uh, he's not making the inroad that he would hope for. In the meantime, Leon Curler, now he has uh, muscled his way past um, uh, Christopher Zochling. He's not escaping up the road quite as quickly as I thought he would. I wonder whether Zochling is thinking, right, I'm coming after you, friend. Um, but at the moment, he's not able to get on terms with Leon Curler. So these two, who have had a really good fight between them, uh, very physical. Uh, there is Ian Chan Guven then running in uh, P2 behind Lauren Heinrich, who's got eight tenths over Ian Chan Guven at the moment. The top three, Heinrich, Guven and Ten Volder ahead of Max Van Splunteren. And then it is the uh, Leon Curler and Christopher Zochling banger race that's going on behind. <laughs> they uh, continue to swap P5 and P6, but it is with Leon Curler at the moment and looks like it's not going to be altered from that because Curler has built a couple of car lengths of margin between himself and Zochling. Then uh, Schuring and uh, Julian Hanses into that uh, P8 position. And our leading uh, junior driver is Morris Schuring in P7. Bastian Bus, unbelievably, is uh, the, in second place in the junior category. He's made it up to 13th on the track, having started stone last and collected that wheel with Rudolf Rehm, uh, who is uh, 15th on the track, third in the junior category. Our leading prime driver, oh, surprise, surprise, is Carlos Rivas, 14th on the track, and uh, Janarek Sluten, who is uh, in 17th. So uh, Julian Hans here, some Rudy Van Buren that we're looking at here and looking at the uh, lap evolution, if you will, over the last three laps between the two of them, which is interesting, always interesting to look at as Rudy Van Buren tries to reel in Julian Hans here and uh, try and take that PA. In the meantime, Julian Hans here, of course, has got uh, Morris Schuring well within his target sights as well. The gap between them is just three tenths. So a uh, three-way fight going on there for the P8 position with but 10 and three-quarter minutes of this race remaining because of the earlier safety car. And here is the redesigned uh, front end of the Allied Racing driver, Bastian Boos, who is currently running in P13. The black and white flag has been shown to Leon Curler, the number 77 car, uh, and that would have been as a result with uh, his little run-in with Christopher Zirkling. Um, again, I think a slightly different approach to the stewarding being taken this year, allowing the drivers to race a little bit and get stuck in. Uh, no drive-through penalty, but a black and white flag is a warning, and uh, if Curler uh, tries the same treatment on Max Van Splunteren, does he catch him in front? If he does catch him, uh, then the stewards might uh, impose a penalty. We're looking at Again, at a replay of the start, and uh, you can see Bastian Bus 
collecting that wheel. I tell you what, I, I've said it before, I'll say it again, that must be terrifying. First terrifying, did you see how the suspension on Bastien Boos's car reacted? I mean, the splitter, the, uh, just about everything, the floor panel, everything was rubbing on the tarmac. But I tell you what, what you said earlier is, it seems to have given something of an aerodynamic advantage to Bastien Boos, because look at him, he's absolutely flying, he's up to P13. So there is Bastien Boos with his... Uh, slightly indented uh, front end of the car but it hasn't hasn't uh, impacted the performance of the car I would suggest or indeed him where you and I uh, would have needed to change our underpants <laughs> having seen that wheel uh, Bastian is just taken it all in his stride and he's on his way well, if uh, when we get the red ball ring, all of the cars have got bonnets shaped like that, we'll know that he's discovered something that was hitherto <laughs> undiscovered. Uh, right, this is Fabio Cicignolia in the number 46 car, uh, head of uh, Bashar Mardini. And, uh, Bashar being right. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Getting stuck in, and uh, that's a little bit further down the grid. Uh, uh, Cicignola in 19th, Mardini uh, was showing in 18th, and uh, Cicignola uh, getting properly stuck in there. Yeah, good racing wherever you look during the uh, Carrera Cup Germany. Look at them side by side here. Only, only eight and a half minutes of this race remaining that uh, is being led by Lauren Heinrich. Eight tenths over Ryan Chan Guven and then Larry Tempolder a couple of seconds further behind us. Up to the inside goes the uh, number 19 car of Antonio Teixeira. Uh, there's Kim Hauschild. And uh, there is our race leader. I beg your pardon, no it isn't. Uh, this is... <laughs> Sorry, as our camera whipped panned across... Uh, you had a panicky moment there, there didn't you? Yes, did, there is uh, Bash Mardini then, uh, head of the uh, number seven Kim car. Kim Shield. Kim House Shield, thank yeah. you very much. And of course, that's the last place you want to be at the moment, is in one of the garages looking at the monitors and listening to us and thinking, oh my goodness, what is going on out there? <laughs> um, Heinrich, seven tenths, he's got, but... Ayan Chang Guven, you can see on the last lap, took very nearly a couple of tenths out of um, Heinrich. So Ayan Chang Guven in the final stages of this race, because we're into the final seven and a half minutes, is perhaps thinking right now is the opportunity for me to try and have a go at Lauren Heinrich. But as you say, Lauren Heinrich's just so sick of looking at the back end of Larry Tenvorder, which some may find attractive, but <laughs> clearly Lauren Heinrich doesn't. Uh, he wants the opportunity to be P1. He is P1, but I tell you what, Ayan Chang Guven has not given up on this. No, Ian Chenguva took his first race win in the Porsche Crown Cup Germany yesterday. Some say that once you've got that first win under your belt, uh, it gives you added confidence and you feel like Guven is driving so well here and with so much confidence. Um, at Spa, uh, he uh, got a fourth place and didn't finish the first race, so uh, he has uh, not got the points that uh, Larry Tenforda got, but he's looking to make that back up. And if he can stay in front of uh, Larry Tenforda in this, as you see Lauren Heinrich having set the fastest lap of the race now, uh, then uh, Ivan Chen Guven will be back in the championship chase. Now Heinrich going deep into the corner. Ivan Chen Guven using every opportunity to close in on him. We're looking across uh, the hotel corner and down onto the pit straight. The best overtaking opportunity and that's exactly what Bastian Bus is trying on Lucas Grunewald. So Lucas Grunewald in uh, the number 15 car running in, in 12th place and Bastian Bus absolutely incredible driver from this young charger started stone last remodeled the front of the car with a wheel and suspension and now is up into P12. Wow, what racing we are seeing here in the uh, Carrera Cup Germany as Bastian Boosler just took advantage of the fact that uh, the number 15 car of Lucas Grunefeld ran wide. He said, thanks very much. I don't need much of an invitation. You certainly haven't got to put it in the post to me, friend. I am taking advantage of that, and advantage of that he did. So uh, Bastian Bus, 17 years old, one of the uh, talent pool drivers, the young drivers, they're encouraged, uh, they're coached and mentored by uh, former Porsche Works driver, Wolf Hensler, as we ride on board with Ayan Chen Guven, looking ahead at our leader, Lauren Heinrich. So, uh, just uh, five and a half minutes remaining in this Carrera Cup Deutschland uh, race two. What a race we've had. We've had everything thrown at it from uh, various bits of uh, car, which uh, were detached from where they should have been, uh, to all sorts of track limit excursions, to um, uh, Christopher Zochling and Leon Kerler uh, deciding each other's paint scheme is the one they'd rather have had on their car. It's been brilliant. 
And it looks as though Lauren Heinrich has just turned the wick up a little and broken away from Ian Chen Gulen. He's uh, was the fastest man on the track the last time around, Lauren Heinrich. And uh, Ian Chen Gulen, suddenly the challenge is not looking quite so strong. But uh, Larry Tenporda, a long way back for him. And uh, he's not used to being in third place. He's used to having an open track in front of him. This is new. Max Van Splinter and Leon Kohler continue their battle. And look at Bastian Bus honing in on Yessa Van Koik. I agree. I agree. I I think he could be on him before the end of this race, you know. Incredible. Carlos Rivas then. The Black Falcon team textile driver uh, sets the fastest lap at 127.773. He, of course, is leading in the uh, pro app classification, uh, Kel Surprise, uh, as Lauren Heinrich leads the race. Eight tenths over Ian Chan Guben, Larry Tempora, who's really losing time now between himself and Ian. Chan Guven, the, uh, the gap is up to 4.2 seconds between them. Uh, we ride on board some of these fantastic shots that we can have. And uh, there is Carlos Rivas then doing a very, very good job. I mean, he's such a talented driver in within class, isn't he? The uh, Black Falcon team textile driver. So Heinrich from uh, Guven, from Tenporto, Franz Splunteren, and Leon Gurl are the top five. And of course, Carlos Rivas is the current Pro Am champion and the championship leader in the Pro Am category. Lauren Heinrich, who's leading this race, is the current rookie championship, and uh, he has got his eyes on the main driver's title. Here we go, Leon Kohler on uh, the number 24 car of Max Van Splinteren, and uh, again, a little bit boisterous, I'd say. No, I disagree with you. I think Max Van Splinteren left the door blooming wide open to Leon Kohler there. I mean, that was, truthfully... Uh, in my opinion, a mistake there because Curler just went through. In the meantime, however, here comes Christopher Sochling ready to bash his way by. And I don't mean that in any way disrespectfully <laughs> to Christopher Sochling. He and I are good friends. But, um, you know, he does know when to stick his elbows out and he'll have seen how easy it was made for Leon Curler and he'll, uh, he will be saying, I'll have some of that as well. Um, so Max Van Splunteren, I don't know whether he just misjudged going into that turn or whatever. Uh, let's see it again because I'm sorry, Brian. No, no. I do disagree with you. No, I, I just... I just think it he was, was uh, when I say boisterous, I just think he was uh, very um, eager and forwards. <laughs> Max Van Splinter on the other side. The whole overtake from start to finish, there wasn't a touch between them, which no. I do accept no. is unusual. I do accept is unusual. Oh, wait, oh Lucas Granovan. What else can you throw at this race? Oh. And uh, uh, a jump across the gravel. I mean, he got all four wheels off the uh, ground. He was in P13. Oh. Uh, he ain't going to be any more uh, once they cross the uh, timing line. So, uh, Gronenbelt getting airborne as he bounces across the gravel. Uh, as you said, what else can you throw at this race? It hasn't started raining yet. Yes. We've got two yes. minutes, though, so the night is young. Uh, but Lauren Heinrich is still looking to take the first win in the Pereira Cup Germany. Christopher actually did manage to get by Max Van Splitteren, who indicated left and pulled over and allowed him to come through, I'm sure. Uh, so it's Heinrich Guven and Ten Forder. Then it's Curler, P4. Zoetling is P5. Max Van Splinteren is re relegated uh, to P6. Look and in the Bastion meantime, Bus. I said, did I not? Bastion yeah. Buse is going to be on him before the end of the race. Bastion Buse has got to go through on the number 26 car of Yasser Van Koik. Surely, because he's done such a good job. And you're right, the aerodynamicists at Porsche are going to be taking a look at the uh, uh, look at this reshaped front end. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but then, who am I to say? Um, but certainly, it appears not to have hampered the performance of the Bastien Bus car at all. So can Bastien Bus get into yes. the top 11? Yes, yes. Van Koik with a car that's uh, got all the right bits pointing in the right direction. And Bastian Bus with his uh, severely modified Porsche uh, honing in on him and uh, less than a minute plus one lap to get past. And uh, it'll be a brave man who bet against it. I think Bastian Bus has got the bit between his teeth. And I think he probably got out of bed this morning deciding that come hell or high water, he was going to get some decent points. He's with his facelift that went wrong. I'm talking to the car, of course. Uh, here he comes. He's on Yes, Van Koy. Yes, Van Koy is going to dive to the inside. He he was certainly close enough to be able to do so. He'll hope Van Koyk has got too much going into the turn. But Buse actually carried a little bit too much speed, so the gap has gone away now. And unfortunately, with only 30 seconds remaining, uh, there's the remainder of this lap, plus one more uh, before the end of this uh, Carrera Cup race. And I'm uh, sorry to say, I'm not sorry to say, I'm not going to apologise for it. Please, race control. Please, Porsche. Can we have another 10 minutes or so? Because it has 
been compelling. It really has. Give it another half hour and Bastian Bush will be on the podium. Did you see him there going wide, picking up the dirt, the back end hanging out? He is driving the wheels off that thing. Uh, really fearless, talented driving. Uh, the talent pool is full of talent. And Bastian Bush up onto two wheels over the curbing. He is wringing the neck of that Porsche. In the meantime, Lauren Heinrich continues to see off Iron Chan Guben for the moment. So, uh, as they head towards the timing line now, they get the last lap board. It's now or never for Iron Chan Guben, but I think he's too far back, to be honest. I think Lauren Heinrich has done a great job here. I'm not going to say the same, though, about um, the opportunity that exists for Bastian Boos, uh, as we will see him and Jesse Van Koyk. Uh, well, I thought we were going to see them around the uh, Turn 14, but we didn't. Well, focus very much on the leader because this is the final lap and Lauren Heinrich has done a great job yes. and uh, this will be his first win in Porsche Carrera Cup Germany. Uh, he came so close last year. Uh, he came back this year as the rookie champion and uh, has got his eyes on the title. Here we go, Bastian Bus on the inside. Brilliant. Of, uh, yes, a Van Koik and uh, still picking up the dirt as he goes past. Bastian Bus, the steamroller coming through the number 99 car. We look again. And uh, no, no contact, touch, no, no. Uh, yes, Van Koik uh, leaves a gap on the inside and uh, I dread to think what the tyres are looking like on that Bastion bus car because uh, they must be absolutely worn through to the canvas. Here comes our leader, Lauren Heinrich. I had Jan Guven, he's got nothing for him, they're through the chicane for the last time. Lauren Heinrich leading the way and uh, he's just got to hold on for a few more corners to win the fourth race of the season for the Porsche Carrera Cup Germany. Here he comes and uh, out onto the home straight is Lauren Heinrich who takes the check and flag for race two of round two here at Oschersleben. Iron Chen Guven second. You see uh, Luke Hartog in the background, but of course he's a lap down third across the line. A uh, very low third for him, and he'll be very disappointed with that. Larry Tenford and Leon Curler after all of his panel bashing through into P4. And uh, the 28 car, Christoph Langer in the fence. And uh, Langer uh, was uh, down towards the back of the field anyway. So, uh, Zirkling in fifth, Max Vesponter in sixth, yes. Our uh, leader in the uh, rookie championship is uh, Morris Schuring. Uh, he finished uh, seventh on the road. Uh, winner, should I say, in the rookie championship. Lauren Heinrich, Sausage and Egg McMuffin worked for him today, didn't he? Really he did. And the winner of the uh, Pro-Am race uh, went to uh, Carlos Rivas, who finishes 13th on the road. But I'll focus very much on the winner of the race overall, Lauren Heinrich. Dominant performance from pole position once again. Drive of the day has got, in my opinion, to go to best. Oh, without a doubt. Boots. 11th from the back of the grid and With remodeling the, the front of the car. Yes. Uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, he's going to need a, uh, a, a, a lie down after that, I should think, because uh, that was a mega effort from Bastian Boos. And I can't wait to see him at Red Bull Ring, uh, starting from a representative grid position. Here's the classification then. Lauren Heinrich takes the win from Iron Chan Guven. Then it was Larry Tenforder. Those are the drivers that you'll be seeing up on the podium. Got your problem now. Uh, Leon Curler, P4. Then it was Christopher Zotling. What a race they've had. Max Van Splinteren. Uh, Morris Schuring takes P7. Julian Hans says creditable finish in P8. Rudy Van Buren, P9. Junker Honker Vuri, P10. And nearly into the uh, top 10, Bastian Boos. Brilliant driving. Yes, I van Koik. Carlos Rivas, of course, for the Pro-Am uh, driver. He uh, takes the win in that. That class, Rudolf Rehn, and then the rest of the order that you can see there. If ever you have doubted why we get so excited about the Porsche Carrera Cup Germany, hopefully today has convinced you this is awesome racing. It really is. You have to remember these cars are all absolutely identical. Driver skill to the fore in this. And uh, this is the circuit that's the toughest to overtake. You can imagine what they're like uh, at some of the other circuits as well. Uh, a great varied calendar for Porsche Carrera Cup Germany. We head off to the Red Bull Ring in June. And then we're to Monza, also in June. Uh, great to be in Italy with this series. Then the remodeled Zanvoort. It's going to be good to see these round the banked corners of the new Zanvoort. Uh, the Nürburgring follows that and Saxon Ring and the season closes in Hockenheim 16 races complete there you can see the points championship Larry Ten Forder at the top Lauren Heinrich just five points behind uh, with 28 points the deficit to Ihan Changuven. 
talking of Zandvoort, the speed they're going to be able to carry into that Tarzan turn now, coming off the banking of the uh, final turn. Extraordinary. Oh, it's going to be uh, great. Can't, I actually am physically excited. I can't wait. <laughs> A little bit... Of, no, I'm not going to say that. Uh, Lauren Heinrich, Iron Chan, Guven and Larry Tenforder then are the drivers that we're going to be seeing on the uh, podium. But every driver... And there were was, there was so many incidents during that race, Brian, where you saw the talent of the uh, driving uh, standards that they have because yeah. the avoidance they had to make when they were cars stricken. You know, um, absolutely brilliant driving. Um, Really, really impressed today. I've really, oh, really enjoyed that race. Thoroughly entertaining. And I think mention uh, to Luke Hartog, I know he had that spin early on. And Larry Tenforda looks almost defeated. Whoever thought that the uh, bottom step of the podium would be such a loss. Well. But, uh, yeah, Luke Hartog, uh, who had that spin, and he made a mistake yesterday. But I think uh, the likes of he and Bastian Bus are going to ensure that we are thoroughly entertained this year, along with that man now, Larry Tenforda. And, uh, Congratulated there by Christoph Hubo who just walked past. That's very nice too. And of course, yeah. uh, he used to uh, yeah, run course. for uh, Huber and uh, uh, Larry Tenforder. People who thought he was going to walk away with it this year are very much mistaken. And in fairness, you and I wondered that. Let's be truthful. We've yep. seen enough of Larry Tenforder to know how talented he is. And yep. we did think this could be a shoe in for him. I can't help feeling that Ian Chen Guven has got a newfound confidence mm. after that win mm. yesterday. That's and um, although the grid qualifying was done before race one yesterday, it just feels as though he has uh, really upped his game and gone up a notch. And I think Ian Chen Guven is going to be at the front of the grid for the rest of this season. So there's Larry Tenforder, a uh, refreshing drink. And uh, very shortly, we will be taking these drivers up to the podium. Yes, using his uh, BWT uh, bottle there. Big up to BWT, who of course are not, uh, who are uh, making the uh, paddock a, uh, uh, plastic bottle-free uh, zone, doing a very, very good job. And uh, there you can see they're lining up uh, head of the uh, media focus that is on the top three: Lauren Heinrich, Iron Chan Guven, and Larry Tenvorder. Then they'll be heading up to the uh, podium. It's Christine there, and uh, a little bit of a shove, wasn't it, to make sure that Iron Chan Guven is in the right place? But uh, well done. Here in uh, replay, the checkered flag being taken by. Lauren Heinrich, who will have been saying to himself at Bloomin' Last. Um, uh, Lauren Heinrich taking the win from Ian Chan Guven, who ran him ran him close to it, to be fair. And uh, both of those two, the pace they had over Larry Tenvorder was was really, really impressive. Really impressive. Uh, all in all, though, fantastic Carrera Cup race. I go for a lie down. So after round one at Spa, which was an absolute lockout for Larry Tenvorder, we get two first-time winners at... Uh, Osher Schleben this weekend and uh, Larry Tenforda suddenly is developing a bit of a headache. Uh, he got two out of two from pole position at Spa. Uh, P3 and P2 yesterday uh, means that uh, the points championship is not quite as easy as he hoped it would be. Lauren Heinrich receiving congratulations uh, from Ayhan Chang Guven and uh, they head towards the cooldown room. There's a slow mo, Larry Tenforda. Uh, for Team GP Elite. And uh, you see him bumping across the curbs, giving it everything. He had nothing for that man, Ian Chen Guven, for Phoenix Racing. And uh, the driver who won yesterday. And he certainly had nothing for the driver that crossed the line first. The number 92 of Lauren Heinrich. Once again, bouncing across those curbs. And uh, he was for Van Berger Huber Racing taking the win for race two here at Oschersleben this weekend. And there was one very happy Mr. C. Huber uh, to the left-hand side of your picture there. Crikey. Steady on, chap. Lifting Christoph is no easy <laughs> easy task, I can tell you. Oh, hark, who's talking? Um, he, uh, oh! I uh, failed to mention, of course, Lauren Heinrich uh, is part of the talent pool himself. We're talking about Bastian Bush and Morris Schuring, uh, but uh, Lauren Heinrich, uh, one of the real up and coming drivers in the talent pool as well, along with Fabio Cittignola, uh, Rudolf Rehn and Antonio uh, Teixeira. Uh, they're all drivers, and Julian Hanses, in fact, in the talent pool. And uh, quite excited, you see that group of uh, young drivers yes. uh, who are being nurtured, uh, mentioned earlier, by uh, Wolf Hensler, and uh, very much the rising stars in GT racing. 
I completely agree with you. And uh, they have this uh, real ability uh, in terms of spotting talent and mm. seeing the drivers that they need to put their focus and emphasis behind. Now, this, according to my uh, learned colleague in the studio next to me, Brian Oliver, is a cool-down room. <laughs> Um, uh, is the uh, is the podium preps room, of course, and uh, it'll be the uh, likes of uh, there. We can see Burkhard Bechtel, who will be bringing the uh, bringing the cars, the cars, the drivers out onto the uh, podium, and uh, there the three await. And here's Burkhard Bechtel then uh, bringing Larry Temporder out to the third step of the podium. And Larry looking reasonably upbeat. Iron Chen Guven, second step of the podium. And there's Lauren Heinrich. He's very tall, isn't he? Even taller now. Top step of the podium for the national anthem. I love listening to uh, Borkhardt. One of the legends of oh, very uh, much so. Porsche Carrera Cup. And um, only fair to say that he does uh, he does so much for us mm. off the air. And uh, always grateful to you, Borkhardt. Absolutely. Christoph Huber up there as well. Receiving a trophy on behalf of the uh, winning team. Christoph is such a wonderful, wonderful team principal as well. He, he and I have had um, some fantastic fun together. He's a, he's a great guy. Oh, look at him. He wins the race for the Champers, doesn't he? Although it hasn't got so much, quite so much fizz as I really rather hoped. But um, there we are. Oh, he's... he's <laughs> yeah, that'll teach him. <laughs> yeah, it will rather. <laughs> Just desserts were, uh, uh, were apportioned there, I think. Oh, steady on, chap. <laughs> so, celebrations on the podium for Porsche Carrera Cup Germany Race 2. We're going to pack it all up and do it all again. It'll be the Red Bull Ring next on the 11th to the 13th of June. Join us there. See you then. Bye-bye.